Our French Bulldog Yoda spent 33 days at sea sailing 4,000 nautical miles across the Pacific Ocean from Panama to French Polynesia with us. Turns out the passage was the easiest part of sailing the South Pacific with a dog. Five months of emailing, completing forms, seven vet visits, and almost a thousand dollars was the preparation for Yoda to be inspected in French Polynesia. But we still weren't certain she would be allowed into the country when we sailed away from Panama. You may wonder why the regulations are so strict to import a dog to French Polynesia. Well, Yoda was born in the United States, a country where rabies exists in canines. And cats. Yes. And many other animals, <laughs> but we're talking about importing a dog. <laughs> yeah. Now, one great thing about uh, French Polynesia is that there's no rabies. Right, exactly. There's no rabies in French Polynesia, in New Zealand, in Australia? There's... No rabies no in Australia. No rabies in Australia. And there's no rabies all across that countries in the South Pacific, yeah. like Cook Islands, uh, Niue, Tonga. No rabies. No rabies. So they're very strict about who comes here. The day had finally come for Yoda to be inspected by the biosecurity vets in French Polynesia. It had been an extremely long road for her. Yeah. Poor girl. On she the boat. spent 33 days at sea with us and then an additional 42 days quarantined on the boat because that's how long it took for us to arrange this vet visit. So so do you want to tell them why we stayed you to stay on the boat for like all this time? Yes. We made landfall in the Marquesas, which are some of the most remote islands in the world. And they do not currently have a vet working and living there in the Marquesas. So the biosecurity vets are based out of Papiete in Tahiti, which is just over 700 miles away. And they only come to the Marquesas when they have special missions or when there are four or more animals to be inspected. So unfortunately for us, that took six weeks. Yeah. We thought about going to Tahiti. We did. We thought about sailing to Tahiti because we figured, listen, that is just fair. Like it's not fair for Yoda to be quarantined on the boat for six weeks. So we started looking at weather windows for Tahiti. We talked to our weather router and he said, listen, you've got to stay put right now. Um, there are tons of lightning strikes going on. In fact, a boat was just struck by lightning in the Tuamotu. So yeah. Stay put, you, I don't advise going anywhere. Yes. Plus, then you would have to, if we wanted to go back to the Marquesas, we'd have to sail back into Which the Which we wanted to. Right, we wanted to. At the end of the day, we would have only been saving like a week or two of Yoda being quarantined on the boat. So all of that rigmarole was just yeah, no not worth, worth it. it. So we waited. I wanted to snack her on, on land. Snacker? <laughs> I, I, I wanted to snack her. I wanted to snicker. <laughs> I wanted to snicker on land at night for a walk, but the truth is no. that it's, it's very dangerous because if they catch her, yeah, they would euthanize her. And yeah. they are, I mean, there's like say. no joke. Yes, multiple people told us about that. Um, the agent in Nukuhiva said, do not bring your dog to shore because if they find out that she hasn't been inspected they'll euthanize her i read it in multiple blog posts online so for us it just was not worth the risk yeah so she was stuck on the boat yeah but now let's go back to the beginning of this process in panama i first emailed biosecurity in french polynesia on november 4th which was five whole months prior to our arrival in French Polynesia, but turns out that really wasn't enough time. Like I recommend emailing at least six months prior. Yeah. They responded with the list of requirements for importing Yoda and requested that I send whatever documents that I currently had. Complete an email form 211A, official microchip certificate, rabies vaccine, DHPP vaccine, Titer test must be done three months before landing and be less than one year old. An indirect fluorescent antibody test or an ELISA test to detect antibodies against leash mania with a negative result within 30 days of departure. Health certificate by a veterinarian establishing your animal has been subjected to a treatment against internal parasites and against external parasites within 30 days and within four days before boarding from the last stopover country. 
official document stating your last day in a rabies-infected country known as a ZARPE. I sent my existing documents and I received an email that I was not expecting and that made me so nervous for the entire rest of the process. It read, after consulting the documents received, I have identified a major problem. This would be the first bump in what would be a very long road. Yoda's current rabies vaccine was expiring in December, so I had planned to have her vaccinated once again before it expired, but that would make the vaccine only four months old before we arrived in French Polynesia, not the required six months. But I thought about it, and then Yoda is really like most dogs in homes in the United States, they're vaccinated as soon as they're, you know, how, how long are they? Like, I don't remember. They're in, like in two months old. Two months old, they get vaccinated. So Yoda had been vaccinated all her life. It wasn't like a new vaccine. Right. So we made their argument with the French Polynesia uh, biosecurity. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, they accepted this uh, rationale, right? And so Fabio's point was really good in that you should not just accept the kind of first response that you get. You have to really think through the situation. And because all of this communication is happening via email, it's really important to make sure that the communication is accurate. Like what you're saying is actually being understood on the other end and vice versa. Yeah. We scheduled Yoda's rabies vaccine for the end of November in Panama City because we would actually be flying into Panama City from the Galapagos where we did a liveaboard dive trip. So it would be super convenient. The reason yeah. why we didn't bring Yoda to the Galapagos or actually take our boat to the Galapagos is because they don't allow pets. Yeah. So we left Yoda in Linton Bay with Jose mm -hmm. and we flew for the liveaboard trip. Uh, and then we arranged with Sergio, who's a driver and a later became a friend to pick her up in Linton Bay, drive her to Panama so we could do the vaccination and then we all would drive back to Linton Bay. Yeah, yeah, I know. It sounds ridiculous to have a driver for your dog, but... Yoda's chauffeur. <laughs> it's just what made the most sense at that time. Yeah. <laughs> so the next step after the vaccine is to check your titer, which means to see if the vaccine has actually worked and you're, you're producing antibodies. Yep, and so that has to be done at least 30 days after the rabies vaccination. And we were going to be in Bocas del Toro. So we found a vet there, Dr. Gloria, yeah. and scheduled the appointment for the day after Christmas. And we thought it was really weird that the office yeah. was going to be open then, but we said, okay. And we took a shuttle from the marina to the mainland and then walked, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour to the <laughs> office. And of course it was closed. <laughs> uh, fortunately I had the number and I called and Dr. Gloria herself actually picked up the yeah, phone. The day after Christmas. The day after Christmas. And she actually had just enough time to come and draw Yoda's blood for the titer test before she was flying out on a trip. Oh, it was amazing. What luck. Yeah. And actually, she gave us a ride back to the uh, to the shuttle. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was she did. very nice. Super nice. So we highly recommend Dr. Gloria if you're in Bocas del Toro. She's awesome. We were working day and night to prepare Wanderlust, our boat, for the longest sailing passage a vessel can make. Where in the middle of the trip, the closest people will be those on the International Space Station. Now it was time for the most difficult part of the process, the leash mania assist test. And why was it so difficult? It was tough because in Panama, most veterinarians do the test in house in a, on a PCR card. So basically on a, on a little card, they drop the blood and, and reacts to yep. see. We're all very familiar with those now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, whereas uh, French Polynesia requires an ELISA test or an immunofluorescent reaction test, which is basically more sensitive. It looks for past and present infections. And so, so it, it is the, the more accurate test, but you just weren't doing it in Panama. Right. It was rough. We went to a lot of it. <laughs> it took not one, not two, but five trips to the vet to get the proper leash maniasis test done. Dr. Sandra and her assistant were able to draw Yoda's blood and would be sending it to Kansas City for the leash maniasis test, but would not have the results until after we were already on our way to French Polynesia. I tried to have faith that everything would work out, 
but doubt was always present in the back of my mind. We settled into life on passage, the first challenge of which was getting Yoda to go to the bathroom. I'm gonna take Yoda up front and hopefully she'll go to the bathroom. She already went pee once today, which was a big win. So now hopefully she'll go. Come on, Yodi. Come on, let's go potty. Unfortunately, no luck this time. Good morning, Yoda. Good morning. What you got there, Fab? Yoda's breakfast. Look at this. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Yeah. Flying fish. Yummy. You excited, Yodi? Oh, yeah. Hot fresh daily. Good catch of the day. Yum. Next up is playtime. Give me that toy. Give it to me. Watching the birds was a pastime for all of us. What do you think, Yoda? You gonna get those birds? Huh? Yoda was so preoccupied with the birds, she wouldn't go potty if they were there. So one of us had to chase them away. But they came back as soon as we turned our backs. Belly wraps, Yodi. Belly wraps. Which of course then turns to playtime and eventually nap time. We're gonna go for our evening walk. We just keep yeah. an eye on the helm a little bit. You ought to know. You ought to be good. Without another resting place for hundreds of miles, the booby took up residence on our bowsprit. You ought to stop it. Stop it. This was what passage was like with the dog. And finally, after 33 days, we arrived in Nukuhiva. I know it's been a month, but you know, <laughs> Though Yoda couldn't go to shore yet, she could still go for a dinghy ride, one of her favorite activities. Unfortunately, it didn't end up where she probably thought it would. Come on, Yodi. Good girl. All right, guys, we are going ashore. <laughs> Oh, okay. There we go. Woohoo! Thanks for staying with Yoda. That's the saddest part. Yoda knew we were going ashore and she can't come. She was so excited. Oh my god. One final requirement for importing Yoda, which was proving to be tricky, was to pay uh, 12,000 South Pacific francs that had to be wired to the office in Papiete. But our U.S. bank was not able to send a wire to this particular destination. You think it'd be easy, right? Wire transfers. I so know. You do it all the time, <laughs> but you cannot do it to this particular place from place. our U.S. bank. So I thought back, back in, you know, in Italy, we are able to send money through the post office. So, and seeing that, you know, French Polynesia is a European style country, I thought yeah. maybe we can use the post office here. And okay, so good news. Yes. Fabio was right. <laughs> it looks like we are gonna be able to send the money at the post office, but right now they don't have any electricity. So. We have to come back tomorrow morning. <laughs> well, at least this is a step in the right direction. For sure. And hopefully we'll save the wire fees from the bank, which is great. Hopefully it's here. And in fact, uh, it does work. It did work. Yeah. So you go to the post, post office and give them the money and they transfer the money to uh, whatever you're going to send it. Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing.
Good morning, everyone. We left Tawata this morning just after 4 a.m. We're heading 90 nautical miles back to Nukuhiva. Yoda has the vet on Thursday. Today is Tuesday. And so we're super excited. We're looking forward to that. Today, the winds are forecast to be pretty light. Right now, they're on our nose, but we have to wait until we get totally past this island on starboard to see what they're really gonna do. So hopefully we do get a bit of wind so we can sail and have a great trip up to Nukuhiva. The sun rose up from behind the island and we were treated to one of the most beautiful sunrises we'd seen in a while. We even had a dolphin escort as we headed off towards Nukuhiva. The wind picked up to 18, 19 true, 15, 16 apparent, and so we've got the main up, the screecher out, and we are cruising. We're going nine knots, speed over ground, seven something, speed through the water. It's great. Hopefully this holds up. Well, the dreamy conditions lasted just over an hour. And now we have a squall that's passing by just to our port. So we quick furled the screecher and we got the motors on again, just trying to get away from this squall. But we did have a huge pot of dolphins and they're just so magical. They were swimming at the bow. They may even still be with us. Oh, just so beautiful. A huge thank you to our patrons. We are so grateful for your support. If you'd like additional content and real-time updates, consider joining the Harbors Unknown community on Patreon. Soon the squall was in the distance and we were sailing under sunny skies once again. Well, after that little squall passed us, all of the wind got sucked out and we've been motoring. There has been like between two and four knots of wind and the water is super flat with just uh, rolling swells. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the wind is gonna come back before we get there. We're just a few hours away. Soon enough, we were approaching Teohi Bay, golden light shining on Nukahiva's shores. Well, we made it in before dark. Always a good thing, even if it wasn't the best sailing day, but we were able to motor sail for the last few hours. And anchoring here is relatively easy. And we've been here before, so that's perfect. And now, day after tomorrow, Yoda's gonna see the vet. Yeah, good girl. Good morning, everyone. Today is the day we have been waiting for for months. The vet is coming aboard to inspect Yoda, review all of our paperwork, which they've already seen, so there shouldn't be any surprises. And then if all goes well, Yoda can go to land. I am so excited, a little bit nervous, but I'm just thinking positive and have faith that everything will be okay. Yoda, today is the day, baby. Yes. We are going to pick up the vet. She's on a green boat in the middle of the bay. I don't know, let's go check that one. I don't think that's it because I don't see anyone outside. Yeah. And it's called, that's Aries. This one they said, hunt or something. I think it's that one straight ahead. We managed to find Claire and Jan from Biosecurity and headed to Wanderlust. So we have to check the microchip. Okay. Give the treatment and I think it's check for the parasites. Okay, it's all right. Yes, there is Papa. Good girl, baby. Don't worry, it's all right. Mm, cut to you. Oh, that feels good, it's huh? Like foot. That Ooh, feels good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> She sheds a lot. 
Okay, now you take your pill? Yay! Yeah. Who is giving the, the pill? Mama is I giving can give the you. pill? Or? Yeah. yeah, here you go, mommy. Take your pill. Oops. You want some peanut butter? Uh, yeah, we'll get you some. You, you want to? We'll get our peanut butter. Do you manage to do it? Yeah, she yeah. got it. Now I need to fill all the papers with you. Okay. If you can please fill this <coughs> thing. So, this is just to certificate of notification. Yep. Yeah. So, for the quarantine and the pass delivery. Okay. okay? You have your papers, your laissez passer? I have this. Yeah, and perfect. I have, I have this for me. Okay. So, I think we are done. Amazing. Yoda has been officially cleared to enter French Polynesia. She can go to shore. She's totally legal. Uh, this has been a long time coming and we could not be happier because we always take Yoda everywhere with us. It's been really frustrating and a bit sad to leave her on board, but now she's free. Yeah, you know it, you know it. This is gonna be Yoda's first time off the boat in over two months. Now, if I had heard somebody say that before actually going through it, I probably would have judged them and thought that it was just kind of cruel to keep a dog on board for so long. We didn't expect to have her on the boat for this long, but now that we've gone through it, she adjusted really well and it was what we had to do to bring her here with us and overall I'm glad you know I'm happy with the choice that we've made and she's going to shore now right are you going to shore Yoda believe it believe it Yoda. Good girl. It took a lot of effort, time, and money to get Yoda here, and it's only the beginning of our journey in the South Pacific. Each country has its own rules, but thankfully there are some resources outlining the process, and the biosecurity vets are helpful. There will be a blog post on our website with more detail linked in the description below.